Coming this summer, July 5th through July 12th, join Jonathan Burness and his family on a spectacular seven-day cruise to Alaska. You'll experience beautiful scenery, worship and musical performances by concert violinist Maurice Glar and modern-day psalmist Marty Getz. There will also be great fellowship, as well as teachings by Jonathan Burness on the Jewish roots of our faith and special guest Mark Biltz, who's a recognized authority on the blood moons phenomenon. Please check our website at www.jewishvoice.org for updates. To register now, call Jabez Travel at 1-888-435-3787, email lisa at allchristiancruises.com, or visit our website. The cruise is departing from Vancouver, British Columbia, and it's a voyage you won't want to miss. Be sure to join us in beautiful Alaska. Come with us to the land flowing with milk and honey. Jonathan Burness and his family want to extend a personal invitation to you to join them in Israel in 2014, November 29th through December 8th, for the Jewish Voice 2014 Israel Tour. You'll experience a land filled with rich history and culture as you walk where Yeshua walked and watch the Bible come to life. You'll visit Jerusalem and the site of the ancient temple, in addition to many more amazing sites. While in the Holy Land, Jonathan Burness will also give you the opportunity to rededicate your marriage vows on the Sea of Galilee. And he'll lead you in biblical teachings at historic locations you've read about in the Bible. Visit our website, www.jewishvoice.org, or call 800-299-YESHUA right now for more information. And make plans to come with us to Israel.
it's amazing how your love would get inside and change me totally. It's amazing all the things that you've been willing to do for love for me. Hey, you're on. Welcome to our live webcast. It's March 13, 2014, and we're so glad that you could join us tonight. You've been watching Shanice Ferguson, the song Amazing, from her Garden of Secrets CD. She's an incredibly talented singer who I've happened to know since she was a little girl. She's the granddaughter of the late Gordon and Frida Lindsay, daughter of Ari and Shur Sukaram, doing a great work uh, in Israel. If you enjoyed her music, by the way, you can order it right now from your screen. Garden of Secrets. You won't go away from the webcast. You'll be able to stay right on the same screen with us while you order. Uh, on today's webcast, we're going to be discussing how you can deepen your faith by understanding who Jesus really was and is. And to do that, we're going to dig back tonight in time to see him in the light of first century Jewish practices and thought. Before we welcome our guest, I have a few cartoons I want to show you to illustrate that Jesus was Jewish. How do we know? Because he had a Jewish mother. You're going to be baptized in the Jordan River in the middle of winter? At least take a towel. That sounds like my mother, my grandmother. Scott, how about you? Sounds like my grandmother too, brother. A good friend dropped in in the studio tonight. Uh, Scott Volk is with us. In fact, your parents are with us also in the studio, they Shelley and are. June Volk, real pioneers. Yeah. Hi, Shelley and June. Scott, this is a Jew. We have one more, by the way. Uh, I like this one too. What were you thinking hanging around near those lepers and without a mask or gloves? <laughs> Jesus was Jewish, his parents were Jewish, he had a Jewish mother. Scott, I'm so glad you're with us. Thanks for having me. This is so glad you're here. Really it's it's a honor. joy. You are um, doing some really interesting things now. Give, just give us a brief, before we introduce our, our guest who's hanging out in the wings in San Diego, Barney Kasdan, tell us a little bit about the ministry you're doing now yeah, because awesome. God's really called you to a, a new phase of your life. Yeah, after pastoring for a number of years, the Lord really has put a burden on my heart for our people. And so I started a nonprofit organization back in 2005 called Together for Israel. And we uh, have the privilege of raising funds for the believers in Israel. It's something that is really very, very much on my heart is uh, the evangelical church is giving millions and tens of millions and hundreds of millions of dollars to Israel. Many times the believers are the ones that are overlooked. They so, are overlooked. Yeah, so the Lord's really opened amazing doors, sharing in churches on God's heart for Israel. And um, best time of my life. Well, you're awesome. I'm so glad you're with us tonight. And I'll, I'll have you chime in from time to time. Sounds great. And, uh, and uh, we're, we're so supportive of what you're doing. We need, we need more ministries. You know, there's so much support, as you said, going to Israel, but we should be supporting the believers yeah, in the land. Absolutely. It's something, yeah, it's something that Paul did, and it's something that we should do as well. We should. Barney Kasdan, Rabbi Barney Kasdan, is with us tonight. Hi, Barney. Can you hear? Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Barney is the founding rabbi of Kilat Ariel Messianic Synagogue in San Diego. He's been ministering there since... 1981. That's a long time. Rabbi Kasdan has done, has done extensive studies on rabbinical traditions, the culture of Jesus in his day, and he's going to share some eye-opening insights tonight on the Jewish Jesus, Rabbi Yeshua, that will definitely encourage you. Barney, again, thanks for joining us from San Diego. Well, I see all those. I see all those books behind you. Have you read all those books, Barney? Well, so you're prepared to to dig into a very, very critical subject. Barney's written an incredible book, by the way. Barney, this is we've we've carried your books before. This is the thickest one yet, brother.
Well, it's an incredible accomplishment. I want to congratulate you. A Messianic commentary. Matthew presents Yeshua, King, Messiah. Barney, we had many people uh, write to us with questions in advance, but we also have an 800 number. It's a toll-free number you can call us at with your questions. The number is 888-777-0782. Again, 888-777-0782, and we will be taking calls live. You can also click the form that's below the screen, or you can tweet us using hashtag JV webcast. So we're taking twits on Twitter. Tweets on Twitter? Tweets on tweets Twitter. Tweets on Twitter. Do I said it. that yeah. backwards. <laughs> you can quick, click, quick, click the form. Or we, 888-777-0782. I like the old-fashioned way. I like it when people call. And uh, again, toll-free, 888-777-0782. And if I could just get a little more sound, Barney, you're, I hear you, but not so well. But um, we have a number of people, as I said, that wrote us in advance, that emailed us questions. So the first one, I'm just going to jump right in if you're ready. All right, here we go. Does God want us to continue his feasts and celebrations as under the Mosaic law in the New Covenant? Does God want us to continue to celebrate the feasts and under the Mosaic law as believers in the New Covenant, as followers of Jesus. not the gain. I don't need more volume. Uh, from the Christian side uh, by looking at the Jewish holidays. And, uh, of course, they all have uh, important implications. They speak historically, historical lessons, but also, of course, quite amazing uh, prophetic pictures of what God intends to do in the near future. Barney, so, yes, you know, I, I, uh, think, I think that there's a false dichotomy that's been created uh, among some today, uh, some Christian uh, teachers today, I think it's a misinterpretation of of Galatians primarily mm -hmm. that we're no longer under the law, which we all believe uh, as Messianic Jews that we're as followers of Yeshua, that we're no longer under the law in terms of of righteousness, of earning salvation, but this false dichotomy that somehow uh, to involve ourselves in anything connected with the Old Testament is putting ourselves under the law mm -hmm. as opposed to grace, as if we tread on grace. When I think Galatians, that Paul's dealing with the works righteousness mentality, that we can't earn our salvation, that it's by grace, but that somehow doing, the, doing anything, like celebrating the Passover, is somehow taboo because we're putting ourselves under the law. Do you see that same false dichotomy being taught? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, uh, this understanding. And one of my simplistic answers to that is, uh, especially for my Christian friends, that, you know, nine of the ten commandments are simply reiterated in the New Testament. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's really a total uh, misnomer to say, well, I'm just not under law, I'm under grace. It's like I sometimes feel like, well, I better hang on to my wallet or something. What, is, what does that mean? We're not under any law. Of course we're under law. Uh, and nine of the Ten Commandments, the Shabbat being the only one not commanded in the New Testament, 
And I think that makes perfect sense because the Sabbath is a special sign between God and the Jewish people. So we Messianic Jews continue on Shabbat and enjoy it. The door's open for everyone to enjoy it. But it's not a mandatory requirements, uh, a requirement upon uh, all the churches of the nations. Uh, but it is unfortunate that people tend to carry it to the other extreme and say, well, let's see if it's, uh, if I want to grace, then, then Paul had to deal with that a little bit. It's, it's, uh, if grace abound, I'll do away with the law. And he says, God forbid. So, so as usual, the truth is in the middle there somewhere. A good balance of Torah and the, the Ruach, I think, the Spirit. Yeah. Scott, you, you, you're a Jewish believer out there in the church. Do, do you see the same false dichotomy? I do. I do. And even as Barney was talking, you know, it, when we say we're under grace, <laughs> you know, it, the, in, in the law it says don't commit murder. Jesus under grace says if you have hatred in your heart, you've it's almost like he bumps it up to an entirely different level. Okay. So I, I see totally where uh, in the church we've put away, to, I mean, to a fault, some of that stuff that is so life-giving, especially when you look at the feast and some of these things that so, so point to Jesus. It's, it's, it's a remarkable thing. Yeah, and, and, and they're missing out. They're miss it, 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 the Bible doesn't start in the book of Matthew. It starts back in Genesis. That's right. And for me, it was an incredible discovery after reading the New Testament yeah. to go back to my own scriptures and to see how there was all of these prophecies right. written hundreds of years before Jesus was ever born, and it all fits together yeah. like a really. Amen. It's so intricate, it's and phenomenal. that's one of the miracles yeah. of scripture, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, it's absolutely yeah. amazing. Hey, we want to get you in on this conversation. You can call with your questions live, 888-777-0782. 888-777-0782, or you can tweet us using hashtag JVWebcast. We're trying to work through all of these Internet things. You know, the Internet's great, but too many emails and uh, too many technical difficulties. Hey, Barney, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, well, let me go on with an another question that we received uh, from one of our um, uh, viewers. They ask, what uh, version of the scriptures is most helpful in understanding Jewish roots. I find many versions are written from another perspective. Well, that's true. Uh, you think about it, of course, <laughs> the best version is Hebrew, the old Hebrew, uh, which that's uh, why a lot of people are digging back and into Hebrew, learning Hebrew. Uh, it's a almost beautiful language, and of course that that is the roots of uh, not only the, the Tanakh Old Testament, but really the cultural roots of the New Testament, more and more people are realizing. Uh, but if uh, Hebrew is not uh, an option for, for a lot of people, uh, there's, the good news is there's some good uh, newer Jewish translations. Uh, our friend Dr. David Stern uh, did a beautiful translation, a complete Jewish Bible. And uh, in English, all in English, but going back through the Hebrew and even the Greek New Testament, and and really uh, bringing out the Jewish flavor and the Jewish context of the passages. Uh, there's a great Bible just just coming off the press pretty quickly called the Tree of Life Bible, and I was uh, privileged to be a part of that. Uh, it's the translation work uh, with a large group, a large committee of uh, Messianic scholars. And it will be an English translation of both uh, Tanakh, Old Testament, and uh, New Testament, New Covenant, uh, with that uh, Jewish cultural perspective and background. So, you know, I, I think there, there's virtually no bad translation. I mean, people can get uh, the message, the, the simple message of the Bible, almost from any translation. But it certainly helps when you... Uh, factor in the Jewish uh, cultural background. Yeah, it, it, it's not it's not the translations as much as the lenses that we look at the scriptures through. When that changes, yeah. everything changes. But there's some great materials now, including everything on the internet out there. It's just absolutely amazing. You have libraries and libraries in a little PDA. It's really something. Hey, we have a yeah. call, Barney. We have a call from the Second Promised Land. Which is Texas, John? John from Texas, are you there? John, second promised land. I like that. I love Texas. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Uh, yes, Jonathan. Um, I've called and talked to you before. My wife support uh, my wife and I support your ministry and your missions going over to Ethiopia. Thank anyway, you, John. I, I have a question: it. Why the confusion and division in the church today regarding uh, who is a Jew and who is not? Um, and I would like you to explain Romans uh, two twenty eight and twenty nine, where it says a man is a Jew if he is one inwardly. Great and question, John. And circumcision oh, man. of the heart. Great question. So I believe I, I'm a Christian and I'm Jewish. So uh, can you can you give me some light of why the confusion and discord in the church and uh, everything about you know why this today? Great. Again, John, great question. I'm so glad you brought it up. Barney, you want to try to tackle that one? Well, it, yeah, it's a great, interesting passage in Romans chapter 2. And uh, a key context of John is, is uh, back to verse 17, Romans two seventeen, where Paul says, if you go by the name Jew, if you have the Torah, if you have, you know, that birthright, and then he ends up in verse uh, 27, 28, uh, saying that one is a Jew who is one inwardly, who has that Holy Spirit. And uh, uh, the, the fact is that, that uh, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit has come upon a Jewish person, is as that one is a spiritual Jew. So I appreciate the sentiment. And listen, our, our Messianic Synagogue in San Diego, we're about 50-50 Jewish believers, non-Jewish believers, but I think it is important, just again, the, 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 to keep the historical context that that a spiritual Jew is never a term used of a Gentile. And I know you weren't really uh, using that term that way. That that uh, a spiritual Jew is a Jew who has the Spirit. I can try to be simple about it. And the fact is that a non-Jew who accepts Yeshua, who has the Holy Spirit, is is a Gentile believer who has the Holy Spirit. And, uh, of course, we're all united in Messiah, uh, but I think uh, we read that context of Romans 2, and I believe he is talking directly to those who were born Jewish at that point. See, one of the things, Scott, I want you to comment on this too, but there's something glorious when it talks about this one new man, Jew and Gentile, coming together as one new man in Ephesians. It's like the marriage relationship of male and female, which remain male and female, and it's the we, we don't morph into something different. It's the beauty of that, of being one flesh, yeah. but distinctly male and female. I, I, it's sad for me when it when a Gentile uh, comes to understand the Jewish roots of their faith and wants to be Jewish rather than Gentile. When the fact that they're a Gentile understanding that they've been grafted into Israel yeah. and their spiritual son or daughter of Abraham, that's an important identity. That's right. And Barney, you'd mentioned something that's so important that your congregation is made up of Jew and Gentile together. And I think that dis distinction between identities, but all one in the Messiah is yeah. so important. Uh, it's not homogenized. Yeah, I mean, but, it, in, in Romans, when Paul addresses the Gentiles, he says, I'm speaking to you Gentiles. There's, there's a role that non-Jewish believers play for the salvation of Israel. And uh, in, in that verse in Romans 2, I don't think Jesus is, uh, or Paul is, is expanding who a Jew is. He's actually restricting it, as Barney said. It's the Jews with the Spirit that are really the ones that are circumcised in the heart. But the one new man thing is so, so key. And when Gentiles really grab hold of the role that they play in Israel's salvation to provoke Israel to jealousy, then they should embrace who they are. Gentile believers grafted into the into the vine. I think it's remarkable. I like to say that God loves Gentiles. If he didn't, he wouldn't have created so many of you. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, thank you, John, so much. Mike from Pennsylvania, we have time for one more question before the break. Mike? Mike, you there? Hello. How are you tonight? Hello. I'm all right. I'm from, Grand uh, from Oregon. Oh, from Oregon. Okay, they, they put up on the iPad here, Pennsylvania. But he's from Oregon. Um, <laughs> it is Mike, though, right? We got the, we got part of it, right? Yeah. That's correct, Mike. Okay, yeah. Mike. Or Michael, actually. <laughs> okay, Michael from Oregon. What's your question? Well, my question is: is I would like to uh, 
uh, ask you about the Adventists, which is the fastest growing denomination in the world right now, which are Adventists, are Sabbath keepers, and have a real good grasp of the Old Testament, the Torah, and the Tanakh, and, and all that, but yet they still continue and don't know very much about the fall and the spring feasts, which the Lord in several places told us that we should keep those throughout our generations. And if we are the Gentiles that are grafted into this vine, how come they don't recognize that? Barney, what do you say? Yeah. <laughs> well, it is interesting, and I'm not the biggest expert on Seventh-day Adventists, but uh, I have had dialogue with a pastor in that denomination, and it's interesting, from my understanding, that they're very strong on the Sabbath keeping, the Seventh-day Sabbath, but they actually uh, not keep the other holidays because I was told they, they believe those are fulfilled, quote, fulfilled in Jesus. That to, I, I think the Sabbath is as well. So I, I just, I, it's a little confusing to me, I have to admit, as a Messianic Jew. Um, and I'm of the opinion uh, that, that the, the holidays are for everyone to understand and enjoy. But that, again, what we we're just talking about, the Gentile identity and the Jewish identity, even among believers, it's important that we keep those boundaries. And that's really to God's glory. So those holidays are, uh, you know, in other words, it's not uh, this, the church, any church, it's not in sin for not keeping the Seventh day Sabbath or, or even Passover. I, I think there's a lot of blessing they can leap from understanding it. But, uh, in a weird way, I think God's actually working things pretty much according to His plan where you have this diversity of a natural branch, as Paul says, a wild branch, yet we're grafted in, we're unified, but distinct. So, um, you know, I appreciate that some churches, some denominations are incorporate a little bit more of the Jewish background. I think the word of warning is that I, I hope it's not, it doesn't evolve into kind of replacement theology, thinking that they have somehow replaced the Jews, or they are the new Israel, because that obviously is a false teaching that we do to in the, in the scripture. Yeah, Barney, thanks. Hey, we've got to take a break. Uh, we'll come back for more with Barney. I want to invite you to call. Uh, let us um, know your question for Barney. You can uh, call us live, 888-777-0782, or uh, you can click the form below or tweet us using hashtag JVWebcast. And you can, I want you to be sure to get a, a copy of... Um, Rabbi Barney Kasten's latest book, Matthew Presents Yeshua King Messiah, a Messianic Commentary. This book provides important uh, revelation on the Jewishness of Jesus. It's going to give you a much fuller picture of who he really was and is. You can order the book uh, right from your screen right now, and you'll be able to stay right here with us as you order. All you do is click uh, to the right of your screen to start your order. It's really easy to do. More with Barney when we come back. Don't go away. Jewish Voice is dedicated to proclaiming the gospel, the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah, to the Jew first and also to the nations. One way we do this is by helping some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world even more important than the physical relief our medical help provides is the opportunity to share God's love through the good news of Yeshua. Today, we are just weeks away from our next medical clinic in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, to help two impoverished Jewish communities living there, the Beta Avraham and the Beta Israel. Our volunteer medical professionals will be providing a clinic for eye surgery, glasses, dental procedures, and specialized medical treatments, all free of charge to thousands of men, women, and children, many of whom have never even seen a doctor or dentist. Will you help these precious people? Every gift, large or small, will make a difference in someone's life. As you respond with a gift of $40 or more, we will rush you the Rabbi Barney Kasten's latest book, Matthew Presents Yeshua, King Messiah. Not only will you experience the wonderful feeling that comes with knowing you're helping some very needy Jewish people, this remarkable book will bring you the full picture of who Jesus, Yeshua, really is from a Jewish perspective. 
the importance of understanding the Jewishness of Jesus, the historical and cultural setting of his day, as it will help you better understand Yeshua's teachings, and the often overlooked rabbinic sources that give fresh insights into Matthew's presentation of Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah. We will also send you a DVD teaching by Rabbi Jonathan Burtis called The Ten Biggest Lies About Jesus and His Jewishness. This teaching examines the fallacies that many Jewish people have about Jesus and His Jewishness. Misconceptions that, if not changed, can separate us from experiencing who Jesus really was and is. Finally, as an ongoing thank you for choosing to help so many in need, you'll receive our inspiring and informative Jewish Voice Today magazine. This bi-monthly magazine brings you wonderful insights into events in Israel, Bible prophecy, and the Jewish roots of your faith. Please call, click now, and please be as generous as possible. When you respond today, you'll be providing life-saving medical help to some very needy Jewish people. And you'll receive these ministry resources that will bless and inspire you. And they'll also be a constant reminder of your partnership with us to bless the Jewish people. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it is a really incredible book. Look how thick this thing That's is. It's a thick one, brother. He worked seven years on this. A mess, it's a whole commentary on Matthew. It's awesome. I want to read it. Yeah, Matthew presents Yeshua, King, Messiah. Let me ask you something, Scott. Are you you're you're out in the churches? I'm I'm not in churches that much because mm -hmm. our ministry is so focused on overseas um, outreach. Are you seeing the light come on the root Christians the when it comes to the roots of the faith? Yeah. Well, the remarkable thing is that I, as a Jewish believer, didn't have the lights on for 45 years of my life, and then when the lights came on, I thought to myself, "This is remarkable." If I, as a Jewish believer, could be so ignorant with regard to God's heart for Israel and even the Jewishness of Jesus and the Jewishness of our faith, how much more the people in the church. So it's a joy to be able to go into churches and share this very, very message. And lights are being turned on by God's grace. I, I think this is an end time revelation yeah. for the church. I really do. Uh, we want to invite you to participate in the discussion. We have a toll-free number you can call. It's 888 782 888-777-0782. Or you can tweet us using hashtag JV Webcast. Sally from Oklahoma. Sally, did we get the state right? Yes, I'm from Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Now. Jonathan, you know Love Oklahoma. You, okay, you, you know okay. from New York and Dr. Gannon's congregation, but I am in Oklahoma now. Oh, but I can hear that New York accent loud and clear. You hear that? Coming guy? through. It's coming through. <laughs> Sally, it's great to have you with us. It's great to be here. Um, I, I, I'm concerned I'm going to focus on anti-Semitism, not on the, the news media part, but, um, you know, I do a ministry within the churches, and I've done it for about 17 years. And um, am I talking to you now? Because there's, I there's a you. delay on the... I, I, there's a okay, delay, but I hear you. On the, what I'm hearing. Uh, okay, I'm going to walk away from you loud that, and clear. But, oh, okay. What I, what I, what I just saw the Son of God, all right? And I was absolutely very upset, um, frustrated. In, in addition to them having most of the facts, you know, confused in the Bible, what bothers me about these productions in the churches and in the media is that they do not portray Jesus as a Jew. They portray the Pharisees as Jews, and they sort of make it look like Jesus started a new religion, and they don't connect it. I mean, you don't see the tassels on him. You don't. I just expect me that we should make our own movie. At least he wasn't. Bl so or what, had, at least he didn't have blonde hair and blue eyes, though. It was <laughs> it was better than some? <laughs> better than some. No, but I'm I'm hearing you, Sally. Keep going. You know, it, it, well, well, that's basically. I'm, I mean, I could go on and on, but I'm just. That's basically what bothers me is that because you get a different audience in the theaters, and and you're getting secular people. I deal with a lot of people and the anti-Semitism in the churches, and they they open up to me about what they felt, and, you know, we, we help to alleviate that. But I just want to, I, I don't know what we can do to help Jesus and, and, and Messianic Judaism and Christianity be portrayed as what it really is. Your program is doing a lot, et cetera, but I'm talking about the movies right now. Yeah, uh, we need a Messianic production. 
It'd be awesome. Stop. That's what I feel. Stop. I know. It's the next thing. <laughs> Sally, maybe you're supposed to be involved in that. <laughs> yeah, maybe oh, it's time. Oh, I would love to. I do, I do stuff like that, but I, we need to fund it. If we can just get people to fund it, I just feel it, that we, we have to give the message to the world. The true, uh, the true Sally, message. you keep you keep proclaiming the truth. You know, Scott, for me, G- Jesus for me was a non-issue as a Jew. He was Jesus Christ, son of Mr. and Mrs. Christ. Isn't that amazing. <laughs> now, were you? Your parents have been believers a long time. What? Were you raised in a believing home? I was raised in a, a, I was raised in a believing home. I think I was around ten years old when they when they came to the Lord. And what and, a blessing! Yeah, it's amazing. Oh. It's amazing. But even growing up in that home. Our Jewishness wasn't the thing that was really the focus, but it was, you know, Messiah and who Messiah was. So I wasn't raised necessarily with observing everything Jewish. Um, however, interestingly, when the Lord really revealed his heart to me, something started stirring inside of me that f- went far beyond just putting a yarmulke on and going to synagogue. There was like this deep burden that Jesus really was Jewish. I mean, Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, sounds much different than Yeshua son of Miriam. It's, it's, sure it I, think we, I think the church has really Gentilized Jesus. To discover that Jesus was Jewish for me was an amazing revelation. Yeah. And Sid Roth, who's going to be on our program next month, Uncle discovered Sid. Was, Uncle Sid discovered Jesus was Jewish <laughs> in Ripley's Believe It or Not. No That's way. how he found out Ripley. Wow. He heard it from Ripley. <laughs> Barney, are you back with us? Can you hear me? Technical difficulties. That's one of the things. We'll keep working on getting Barney back. Barney, <laughs> uh, can you hear me, Barney? Okay, we'll keep working. No audio, so we got to keep working on that. Hey, uh, we had so many people uh, write in. What is the obstacle for unsaved Jewish people and not realize, realizing that Jesus is the Messiah? What are they not seeing or identifying with, and how are they not able to make the connection? Hmm. that Jesus is the Messiah. That's a great question, which I want Barney to tackle when we get his audio, but yeah. that's, Th- that's why aren't they recognizing huge. who he is? Well, I think the the Bible, doesn't the Bible say that there's a partial blinder over the eyes of the Jewish people? Indeed. So so that the the, the nations? Romans 11. Yeah, Romans they, have, 11, they have an opportunity to come in, so I don't think necessarily that a Jew gets saved just simply by somebody going and convincing them. I just think it has to be a revelation from heaven. So their eyes are blinded so that the nations can come in. But our role as the nations is to provoke Israel and those Jewish people to jealousy. Maybe if the church starts doing a better job with that, maybe then their eyes, maybe it won't be so difficult for them. So you know, you know what's, what's, what, when I think about this question, because it's such a great question, and there is a blindness that's covering the eyes of the Jewish people. The good news, according to Romans 11.25, is that that blindness is covering their eyes only for a season. That's right. And that that blindness will ultimately come off of That's their right. eyes one day. But what, what's sad when I think back about my experience is that I heard the gospel many times as a teenager, but every time I told the person sharing with me that I was Jewish, they always apologized to me. That's something. And what they were doing was reaffirming my erroneous view that Jesus wasn't an issue for me. Mm. And that's sad, and it's so important that Christians understand that the gospel is relevant for Jewish people. In fact, the gospel's to the Jew Work a little first. Bit. That's right. And that they're the ones that are to provoke them to jealousy. That's right. Barney, do we hear? We have you back. I'm getting. I think so. Yeah, I great to so. have you back with us. Good. Thank hey, you. Uh, j- chime in on this question. What is the obstacle for unsaved Jewish people in not realizing that Jesus is the Messiah? What aren't they seeing or identifying with? And and uh, how are they not able to make the connection that Jesus is the Messiah? Because part of this is the way that he's been portrayed to us through the centuries. I, I fully agree. I, I think, you know, there are some the, quote, theological objections, problems. It uh, seems like a lot that I would call sociological or historical object, objections and barriers. Um, I mean, a lot of people, they, they think, well, why, hey, can't, can't we see Isaiah 53? Can't we see, you know, these, these great prophecies? What's wrong? And, and the fact is, you know, I mean, my own grandparents had to flee from Russia, from a Christian area, 
And, you know, it's more, I, unfortunately, it's more personal issues, sociological barriers. And, you know, a lot of us aren't even getting to the theological uh, questions and, and really digging in. Um, you know, we, we, we think that somehow Jesus doesn't relate to us and somehow it's a conversion that somehow we're not going to be Jews anymore. So um, I, 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 I really agree that, that uh, probably Christians, uh, as they talk to their Jewish friends, need to have a better grasp of the Jewish historical experience. Barney, you think, so you think the presentation needs to change? That, the, that when Christians approach Jewish people that the message needs to change? I think the presentation does. Of course, the, the good news is, is good news, and, and just that phrase, good news to the Jewish people, uh, you know, most of the time, historically, we've not experienced it as good news. I, I find, Jonathan, that, that a lot of Christian material, uh, even that material trying to reach Jews, it's, it's answering questions that Jews usually aren't asking. So, um, you know, I think there's, there's just a disconnect of the historical experience, of the cultural experience, and which is all the more reason, I, I think, as Christians understand the Jewishness of Jesus, it's going to enable them to connect more sincerely with the Jewish uh, friends as well. Barney, we just have time for one more caller, Bishop Shad from Massachusetts is on the line. Bishop, are you there? We just dropped him. Okay, Bishop Shad will have to call us back. Barney, uh, just give us some, an, a great title, Matthew Presents Yeshua, King Messiah. Can you unpack that just in, in, a, in a minute for us? Yeah. Well, I love the term King Messiah, and, and so many commentaries on Matthew catch that detail that he's presenting uh, Jesus as king. Uh, those of us who are Jewish recognize that term probably. It's a very common term in the Orthodox Jewish community, that King Messiah is coming. Melech uh, Shiach is coming. And uh, so I just thought, you know, it's such a, a truth, and it does seem like that's Matthew's perspective as a Jew himself. Uh, not presenting Jesus as the savior of the world so much, which he is, but as especially uh, the king, Messiah of our people. So I try to get back, and I'll tell you what, it was fun. From, I've done a little bit of rabbinic studies with the years, study some graduate work as well, and, and uh, I, I, I think a lot of Christians and Jews would be surprised how close we really are on this idea of the Messiah, the Shiach, uh, if we study the other side of the tradition. Well, it's an incredible piece of work, Barney. I think Bishop Shad is back with us. Bishop, are you there? Bishop Shad, are you with us? He's, he's, we'll give it another minute here. <laughs> okay. I hear something. Bishop? Yes, yes. Hi, uh, welcome. I am so excited to, to be uh, sharing with you today. Uh, I pastor a, a Messianic church. I had two trips to Israel, and uh, I was trained in the Protestant church, but <laughs> somehow God has opened my eyes to the Hebrew roots of, of my faith. And, and for the past three years, four years, I've been studying every book I can find, and uh, I've made much contact with, uh, with our rabbi local. Do you have and this one, Bishop? When I, Do you have this when one? I first, this... When I first heard or got the idea that of my Hebrew roots, uh, Hebrew roots, I, I was so excited about it. And what I would like to know, why isn't the church excited when they hear about it? It's almost like when you, when you mention something about your Hebrew roots, uh, they want to... <laughs> They want to throw you out of the out of the bushes. So if you can answer that, I, I, I would love to know point. the answer to that. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Bishop. Uh, Barney, that's such a good point. Why aren't people get? 
it's it's polarizing and why why is there that reaction yeah well uh it's kind of like jesus when he was with us on planet earth uh, uh it, it kind of rocks the boat it's, it shakes up the established view quite often yeah. and you know at this point in history we've got something like 1800 years of, of uh church history and and uh you know, it, it, it's thinking in a different way. I think you said earlier, putting on uh, different glasses to, to look at Jesus or look at the New Testament. And uh, some people, you know, change is, is uh, threatening to some people. But, of course, on, on the, the positive side, I, I, a lot of people, I think there is a major movement um, in the Christian world to rediscover uh, and uncover the Jewishness of, of Yeshua because something within our spirits tells us that, you know, that's our, our Messiah, that's our Savior. And we need to, it's, it's just good biblical interpretation to understand the original culture, context, holidays. Uh, we don't necessarily even have to follow them ourselves, uh, all of them, but it's going to give us an appreciation of who the real Yeshua is. Well, Barney, I, thanks for joining us tonight, and thank you for your contribution moving us forward in this direction. Uh, it, it's uh, an awesome piece of work. Matthew presents Yeshua King, Messiah, and there's some incredible insights into the Jewishness of Jesus and why it's important for your faith. Uh, uh, you can um, order a copy, if you haven't done so already, of Rabbi Kasdan's book right here uh, online. I encourage you to do it right now from your screen. You just click the button that's to the right of your screen to order, and you won't miss anything. You'll be able to stay right here with us on the webcast. So really get this. This is Revelation from on high. We'll be right back. Jewish Voice is dedicated to proclaiming the gospel, the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah, to the Jew first and also to the nations. One way we do this is by helping some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. Even more important than the physical relief our medical help provides is the opportunity to share God's love through the good news of Yeshua. Today, we are just weeks away from our next medical clinic in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, to help two impoverished Jewish communities living there, the Beta Avraham and the Beta Israel. Our volunteer medical professionals will be providing a clinic for eye surgery, glasses, dental procedures, and specialized medical treatments, all free of charge to thousands of men, women, and children, many of whom have never even seen a doctor or dentist. Will you help these precious people? Every gift, large or small, will make a difference in someone's life. As you respond with a gift of $40 or more, we will rush you the Rabbi Barney Kasten's latest book, Matthew presents Yeshua, King Messiah. Not only will you experience the wonderful feeling that comes with knowing you're helping some very needy Jewish people, this remarkable book will bring you the full picture of who Jesus, Yeshua, really is from a Jewish perspective. The importance of understanding the Jewishness of Jesus, the historical and cultural setting of his day, as it will help you better understand Yeshua's teachings and the often overlooked rabbinic sources that give fresh insights into Matthew's presentation of Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah. We will also send you a DVD teaching by Rabbi Jonathan Burtis called The Ten Biggest Lies About Jesus and His Jewishness. This teaching examines the fallacies that many Jewish people have about Jesus and His Jewishness, misconceptions that if not changed can separate us from experiencing who Jesus really was and is. Finally, as an ongoing thank you for choosing to help so many in need, you'll receive our inspiring and informative Jewish Voice Today magazine. This bi-monthly magazine brings you wonderful insights into events in Israel, Bible prophecy, and the Jewish roots of your faith. Please call, click now, and please be as generous as possible. When you respond today, you'll be providing life-saving medical help to some very needy Jewish people. And you'll receive these ministry resources that will bless and inspire you. And they'll also be a constant reminder of your partnership with us to bless the Jewish people. Thank you. 
We're moving now to our breaking news and insider insight segment where we share news from around the world that you won't hear anywhere else. And of course, the news right now is where is Flight 370? Everywhere, every station you turn to now, news station, is covering this Malaysian uh, 777 that just disappeared. Scott, where is Flight 370? Just disappeared last Saturday somewhere over Southeast Asia. It's, it's a remarkable story, but I'm anxious to hear what your take is on this. Okay, I, I have a theory. You do? I have a theory. We tell you that this is news you're not going to hear anywhere else. And here's my theory, okay? I believe that this was uh, an act of sabotage. I don't believe, well, I think we'll find the wreckage. Uh, there's speculation that it landed somewhere. I think it's gone. And uh, before this was breaking news, all world attention was on Russia and Ukraine. You, you have to understand that, that, look at this. Russia has invaded <laughs> Ukraine invaded Crimea. Yeah. This this has this is this is reminiscent of, of World War II mm. and the Nazi invasion of Poland. Well, what did Adolf Hitler did? He staged crises around the world to divert attention off of their invasion of Poland. Mm. I think Russia's involved. Wow. I think Russia's involved. <laughs> You'll never you might not hear that anywhere else. And if I'm right, maybe I'm a prophet, I don't know. But I think Russia's involved with this simply to divert wow. attention away from a much bigger story, Scott, which is the invasion of a sovereign nation, the nation of Ukraine, mm. by Russia. And now there's this uh, amendment, this referendum being voted on to actually take part of Ukraine and make it part of Russia. And it's, it's, we're talking about troops that have invaded another country. So I think that this is a, a diversion. I really do. But uh, you, you watch and see if it ever comes out. I don't think that these two Iranians have anything to do. I think that Russia is involved in this somehow. Wow. Uh, well, turning to Israel, uh, Israel intercepted another ship, Class C, flying under a Panamanian flag this time, containing what long-range missiles from Iran <laughs> bound for the Gaza Strip. Mm. And again, where's the world criticism? It doesn't exist. Is Iran apologized for this? No. This is Iran trying to smuggle weapons to destroy Israel. This is a dangerous nation. And the world's saying, nothing, Scott. Uh, uh, now, Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu, said that uh, made a statement to Iran is hiding these shipments of long-range missiles to Gaza. Today it's missiles, tomorrow nuclear suitcases mm. sent around the world. This is not a, 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 Iran's not a danger for Israel only. Iran is a danger for the entire world. Yes, I agree with you. And even, even as we're getting ready to uh, talk about Purim, it's, it's, I think there's a diabol diabolical plot against Israel. And when stuff like this happens and there's no outcry from the world or fingers start getting pointed at Israel, it just blows me away. I, there's no rhyme or reason to it in the way I think. I, I just don't get it. Yeah, it's not about um, uh, America being attacked because of their support of Israel. America's the, the, the greater Satan. Yeah. And the, the Islamic plot is the dist their commitment is to yeah. destruct it to the... To the uh, uh, takeover of the entire world, to yeah. the subjugation of the entire world. Hey, I want to continue to mention what's going on with the Iraqi Jewish archive. For those who aren't aware of it, in 2003, coalition forces uh, found thousands of documents and historical data from the Jewish community in the basement of, of the military intelligence headquarters, stolen by Saddam Hussein from the uh, synagogue. Uh, in um, Iraq, stolen from Jewish households. Amazing. In Baghdad, and it was to the credit of the U.S., they spent millions of dollars getting the stuff back to the U.S., preserving it. They invested $3 million in, in actually restoring some of the, uh, the documents. Uh, and where is the this US stuff is today? The, it's in Washington. Actually, it's on tour right now around the U.S. That's the good news. The bad news is, is that the State Department is planning to give it back to Iraq. Uh, later this year. The problem with that is there's no Jews in Iraq. <laughs> They're gone. These are Jewish archives in Iraq. Here, here's some good news. Last week, the House of Representatives 
introduced a new resolution urging the State Department to renegotiate the terms. It's not yet passed. The Senate did the same thing, but it's not binding. And as of now, the State Department is still planning to return this. Uh, this is reminiscent of Nazi Germany, and, and we don't give, think, think of giving things stolen from the Jewish, Jewish community stones. back to Germany. We would never do it. Uh, so these things should not go to Iraq. Uh, I was recently in Israel, I interviewed a Jewish man who fled from Iraq, the former ambassador to, uh, to uh, the UK, actually to Ireland. He's the head of the Jewish community, or the Iraqi community in Israel, and I did an interview with him, uh, amazing interview. I really encourage you to watch it. Uh, we have a website, rescuejewishproperty.org. You can watch the video. So far, and by the way, we have a petition, a million names. We're trying to get a million names, Scott, of Christians signing this petition to stand with Israel and say, State Department, do not give this, this Jewish property to yeah. Iraq. Don't do it. And, yeah. and we, we want to join our voices with the Jewish community in saying this is wrong. And uh, so, so far, we have 10, over 10,000 signatures peti uh, on our petition. And I want to ask you to sign our petition. Uh, you can uh, continue to pray, uh, put pressure on the State Department, and the petition uh, is available at this website, rescuejewishproperty.org, rescuejewishproperty.org. And then you can click the share button uh, on the site to tell your Facebook friends about it. We want this word to spread. Yeah. We need your help. We need your prayers. This is an opportunity for you to make a difference by simply signing your name to this petition. I hope you'll do that. It's important. It is important. It's outrageous. It is outrageous. It's just crazy. Yes. Hey, for uh, other news at Jewish Voice, our 2014 Inspired Alaska Cruise is July 5th through the 12th. My family and I are really looking forward to this intimate time of fellowship with our extended Jewish Voice family. Uh, we've got some great guests joining us, uh, including Mark Biltz. And Mark is an expert on blood moons. He's going to be talking about the, 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 the red blood moons, which is really interesting. And Scott, he's replacing you as our guest speaker because you're going to be <laughs> off where? I'm going to be in the Philippines, but Mark needs to send a thank you to me. Uh, he, he will, but he, he's, <laughs> you know, he's going to be uh, talking about a topic that is really, really fascinating. Yeah. And NASA, he got this off the NASA website. I wow. think the Lord really inspired him. He's the original guy, by the way, that had this revelation uh, uh, about the, the blood moons, and it's absolutely fascinating. So he'll be talking about that on the cruise. I'll be talking about Bible prophecy. And we have some great musical guests. Maurice Scalar, a world-class concert violinist, will be uh, performing. And then Marty Getz. Ah, I wish I was wow, going. Wow, he's so talented and extremely <laughs> gifted pianist and psalmist. He's a modern-day psalmist to be leading us in worship. This cruise is going to be inspiring. It's going to be refreshing. You've never been to Alaska. Never been to Alaska, but I'm going one day. And I hope your parents join us for their 50th wedding anniversary. I hope they I hope do, you too. you guys are there. It's going to be a lot of uh, fun, and it's going to be inspirational. So I hope you'll join us. We have a little clip about this, so take a look. Coming this summer, July 5th through July 12th, join Jonathan Burness and his family on a spectacular seven-day cruise to Alaska. You'll experience beautiful scenery, worship and musical performances by concert violinist Maurice Glar and modern-day psalmist Marty Getz. There will also be great fellowship, as well as teachings by Jonathan Burness on the Jewish roots of our faith and special guest Mark Biltz, who's a recognized authority on the blood moons phenomenon. Please check our website at www.jewishvoice.org for updates. To register now, call Jabez Travel at 1-888-435-3787, email lisa at allchristiancruises.com, or visit our website. The cruise is departing from Vancouver, British Columbia, and it's a voyage you won't want to miss. Be sure to join us in beautiful Alaska. Man, it's going to be... Why aren't you going, man? <laughs> <laughs> Next year. Next year. Next year. Hey, our first uh, outreach of 2014 just finished. Thank you so much for your prayer and support. Many of you supported this. I want to show you some pictures Amazing. of how God worked in our midst. This is in Waliso, Ethiopia. This is just one of many lines of people waiting to be treated. Okay. And uh, we treated thousands. We're going to show you the numbers in just a minute. Incredible. Look at this. People are really, really sick there. And these people are desperate. Many of these people have never even seen a doctor or a dentist. 
And, uh, oh, they're, they're lovely people, aren't they, Scott? Mm. Yeah, they're beautiful. They're just precious. It, uh, it takes over 300 workers to put on one of these uh, outreaches, one of these clinic outreaches. They come by donkey. They walk. Uh, uh, we've had people walk 30, 40 miles to the, uh, on foot. And uh, kids, old old people, uh, they wow. just run the gamut. They're, they're just beautiful people. When were people. you there? Uh, this was last week. This was just a week ago. And this is water. This is an educational class for uh, water, sanitary water. And we were able to distribute almost 5,000, so over 4,800 personal water purifiers Beautiful. to individuals. And this is solving a huge problem of unsanitary uh, water. Uh, just uh, uh, amazing. Uh, volunteers from all over the world that come. <laughs> And look, she's happy. She she had help for her baby. Look at the. This is just the U.S. team, and then we're joined by almost 200 nationals. Wonderful. It's an amazing. Let's look at the numbers. Uh, these are just amazing numbers. Again, this just wrapped up last Friday. A 7,067 patients treated. Over a thousand received dental care. 1,623 glasses. Most important number, which we've which we've highlighted, 1,265. People professing Jesus as their Messiah for the first time. <laughs> Amazing. And uh, look at healings, miracles, and you help to make that possible. And we have lots more opportunities this year in 2014 uh, to, to join us. Uh, let's put up the dates. Do we have the dates of upcoming uh, outreaches? Yeah. Uh, look, at, we, we still have uh, uh, an outreach in Addis Ababa. I'll be in, in Addis for that uh, clinic in April, and then we have a festival in Ukraine. Scott, we're going back to the original, one of the original places we did a festival in Ukraine 20 That's years ago. Amazing. The same concert hall. Come it's going to be it's amazing. Gonna be awesome. Two outreaches in, in Zimbabwe to reach the Lemba Jewish community, an isolated Jewish community in the bush of, of Zimbabwe, and then we'll be going back to Gondar, Ethiopia, in the north as well. So Wonderful. lots of opportunities for more information. You can uh, email us www.jewishvoice.org forward slash outreach. What an amazing experience. It's like an Indiana Jones adventure. <laughs> hey, uh, learning about the Jewish roots of our faith deepens our understanding of who God is and how he works. So I want to share a little about the upcoming holiday of Purim. Scott, we're about to celebrate Purim out of the book of Esther. Purim out of the book yeah. of Esther. Just we have one minute. One, to talk well, about maybe Purim. I can. Can I just read one verse read. out of the book of Esther? Go for it. Esther chapter 3. Listen to this. It says, Then Haman said to King Ahasuerus, Boo. Boo. Boo Haman. Boo Haman. There's a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the peoples in all the provinces of your kingdom. Their laws are different from those of every other people. They do not keep the king's laws, so it is not in the king's best interest to tolerate them. If it please the king, let it be that they be destroyed. Isn't it amazing that 2,500 years ago, a man named Haman went to a king and uh, ordered and, and, and said the Jews should be annihilated. 2,500 years ago, 25 years ago in the Hamas charter, you have the very same thing. So from Haman... To Hamas, you've got Hitler, you've got Herod, you've got all these H's. Oh my gosh, I never thought what do you think about, about that. that? <laughs> but but it's it's a nonstop thing, a diabolical plot to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. I think that's the message of Purim, that God is looking for modern day Esthers really to go into the king. And and that's what the church is called to do, to stand for Israel, to pray for Israel, to give to Israel, because the Haman spirit is in operation today. Scott, look, and, and I think the book's prophetic. You have Esther who has access to the king. Yes. She's adopted by Mordecai, Come the on, Jew. Bro. It's awesome. She's hiding her Jewish identity. Yeah. Mordecai stuck at the gate. Yeah. I, I see the church in Israel in that. It's amazing. Interesting fact about Esther, by the way, and I really urge you to read Esther, the book of Esther. It's amazing. The story of Purim. God's not mentioned once not in the once book. Once in the entire book. But he's behind yes, the scenes. Yes, he's orchestrating everything. Yeah, it's amazing. And that's yeah. how God is in our life. Uh, hey, we're... Um, we are almost out of time. We take every opportunity um, to pray for uh, the needs of our prayer partners uh, and our supporters. And uh, we end every uh, webcast in prayer. So many of you um, emailed us with needs. Uh, we had so many prayer requests uh, come in. And uh, maybe you have a need. You, you don't have to send us the need. God knows it. The Bible says that he knows your need before you even pray. 
He knows every hair on her head. In Scott's case, in mine, it's not such a <laughs> big issue. But God but he cares. Does. He loves you. He does. He's there to answer prayer. Uh, Scott, re read some of the requests yeah. that came in. This first one is from Don. My wife of 49 years has been diagnosed with pancreatic oh. cancer. She still has so much to give to family and friends. Our hope is in the Lord. Most high through Yeshua, his son. Don, we're going to be agreeing with you. Susan sends in a prayer request to pray for her husband to have great favor and wisdom on his job. And one more, Jerry, uh, pray for me to be able to go on one of your mission trips to help people. Jerry, we do pray for that. Yeah. Uh, many that have financial needs, some are facing the foreclosure of their home. Maybe that's your case tonight. Flores asked for prayer for her husband to be healed, had a really bad EKG. Uh, Deborah's asked prayer for her 35-year-old son who's a meth heroin addict mm. since he was 15. Mm. You know, nothing's impossible for God. That's right. That's right. And uh, no matter how big the problem is or how small, God has it under control. Amen. So I want to ask you tonight just to reach out with us in faith. The Bible says we're two or three. Agree on earth is touching any one thing. It shall be done. So Amen. just reach out in faith with us. God cares. Again, he loves you. And he wants to touch you right now as you reach out in faith. Scott, would you lead us? Yeah, Lord, I thank you so much that even before these prayer requests came in, you knew these needs. Lord, your word says before we even ask. So, Lord, I pray that you reach down, Lord, for Don's wife, for Susan, for Jerry, for Alfred, for Lori, for Lydia. Lord, for the others, Lord, whose names you already know, I pray, great God, come into their situations. Lord, be the God who answers, Lord. And as they look to you, I pray that their faith would not be hindered, Lord, that they would trust the God of the promise. Lord, you're a God who keeps covenant to a thousand generations. So, Lord, may these ones hold on to your promises in the midst of sickness, in the midst of financial uh, shortcomings. May they look to you as the healer. May they look to you as the provider. May yes, they look Lord. to you as the encourager. And God, you never leave us. You never forsake us. May they be encouraged deep in their inner man of who you are and, and that you love and care for them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for meeting every need tonight. Amen. We pray for those that have financial needs. We thank you that every need is met yeah. according to your riches and glory in the Messiah. We pray for those that need healing, and we Jesus. declare by the stripes of Messiah they are healed. Amen. We pray for those that are fighting addictions or praying for Jesus. addictions of loved ones. Mm -hmm. We declare freedom, and we Amen. say whoever the sun sets free That's right. is free indeed. Amen. For all of these needs, we thank you for touching each one, for meeting Amen. every need. In the name of Yeshua. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. By whose stripes Amen. we are healed. Amen. We are delivered. Amen. We are saved. Amen. Amen. And amen. Well, that wraps it up. We're out of time. Next month, April 17th, our webcast, April 17th, Sid Roth, our good friend Sid Roth. He is something, isn't he, Scott? He is something. I wish I could Uncle be Uncle Sid, he's going to be sharing uh, on uh, how to minister to Jewish people, how to share the Messiah. Sid Roth, that's April 17th uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can follow us uh, on Twitter. In the meantime, you can get signed up uh, now so you can send us future webcast questions using hashtag JVWebcast while we are live on the webcast. Uh, we, we're on Facebook, and you can check us out on Facebook. We have a Facebook community, and uh, we'll keep you updated on what's going on with the ministry. We are out of time. Another great webcast coming to a close. So glad you could join us. I know that we got some of your questions, but there were hundreds that came in. If you want to learn uh, more, don't forget to order Rabbi Kasten's book, uh, Matthew Presents Yeshua, uh, King Messiah. We'll show you that one more time before we close our webcast with music from Sh Shani uh, Ferguson. And thanks so much for joining us. I wish you God's blessings. We'll see you again next month. Scott, thanks for joining us thanks as for well. Having God me. bless you. Shalom. Bye. Jewish Voice is dedicated to proclaiming the gospel, the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah, to the Jew first and also to the nations. One way we do this is by helping some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. Even more important than the physical relief our medical help provides is the opportunity to share God's love through the good news.
of Yeshua.